I got a piece of fish on my bench. I'm not sure what fish, but it's white fish. I've cooked like white fish maybe twice. Every time I've come across cauliflower in my life, there's been something else to eat, so I just chose that. Hopefully, we can redeem cauliflower, the mistake that it is, and, and make it something palatable. I like adding a little squeeze of lemon, but this has got to actually be predominantly lemons. I'm at a loss, really. I think, honestly, I think I'd have rather had almost anything else, lemon chocolate, but I do have a rough plan. Pears. I actually really am stunned. There is no two ways about it. Daniel's dish does sound delicious, but there is a simplicity about it. We've got blanched peas, we've got a cold pea soup, we've got onions and bacon, diced chorizo. I love the idea of the quail's eggs. We know these ingredients work, but where's the risk? Where is the point that you think, wow, I've never had that before? Birmingham-based private chef Dan has fought his way to the finals delivering innovative Southeast Asian and Chinese-inspired dishes. I'm taking a risk. It's pastry. It's not my strong point, but you are master chef. I don't want to be the person that didn't give everything a go. The saffron twill sadly didn't work, so I've left it off the dish. Thank you very much. I'm almost kind of through habit trying to get my phone to take a photo of it. It's gorgeous. Now listen, you've got 15 minutes to get your panna cotta out, right? Right. Uh, you going to be on time? Yeah, of course, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, well, I did the game. Now panna cotta, sometimes it's too wobbly for me, and then other times it's just too much gelatin in that. So hopefully it's perfect. And to serve that with the rum and pineapple sauce, nice tropical flavors. I'm just going to sit here and pretend I'm in a lovely sunny place. It's an edible pina colada. <laughs> yes. These are my flavors. Well done. Oh, I'd better Go on. take one with more sauce. So you can have the little amount of Cheers. sauce. Seems yeah. to the judges. Cheers, Ben. <laughs> Master Chef was a truly, truly life-changing experience. And I've now got 10 years of working in restaurants and actually owning restaurants as well. Two years ago, we opened a restaurant called Vandalal in Cambridge. It's vegetable focused. We try and create an ever-changing multi-course tasting menu from the very best produce that, that we can find. My favorite thing that happens in the restaurant is when we talk to guests and they say, I've just looked at this menu and I didn't even realize that it was totally vegetable focused. You cannot afford to make mistakes in pastry. Every element of Ryan's dessert needs to be just right. 45 minutes left. 45 minutes left, please. Head chef Daniel has excelled balancing flavors and ingredients, inspired by his native Portugal. So I think it's really important to send out today. I'm choosing to cook something very simple and hopefully make it really special. I don't know if that's too much of a gamble at this stage, but let's go for it. The chefs, brilliant. That is incredible. Absolutely delicious. It tastes fantastic. I am going to go out on a limb and say this is the most beautiful plate of food I've ever been served on MasterChef. Two champions and a finalist of Celebrity MasterChef. Greg Rutherford, Lisa Faulkner, and Ryan and Clark Neal. Two courses, one hour and 15 minutes. Sadly, one of you is leaving the competition. Let's cook. Let's go. If I pull this off, it's going to be good. 
Kadena, our para-Olympian, is an extraordinary force to be reckoned with. She has been truly ambitious. Under the cloth, she got a mackerel. Oh, uh, they look alive. Never filled a fish before and absolutely went for it and succeeded. I love that fish. We've seen a dessert from her with a panna cotta with passion fruit and coconut. You have brought tropical sunshine to this plate. I do admire your ambition. I think that is absolutely beautiful. Look at the rise on that souffle. While Liam gets to work filleting the eight kilo turbot. I enjoy filleting fish, but I've never quite done it under uh, this amount of pressure before. Aaron has begun prepping the main course. Pigeon with sardine stuffed aubergine. Ah, much better. Oh, no, that's what I do me. I am moving on to the third one, which looks like Stilton. Or like Gorgonzola. I feel like it's a trick if it's just Stilton. Don't look at us, just write <laughs> down what you think it is. Okay. Right, the fourth one looks like Camembert or Brie, which I love both of. That's Camembert because it reeks, I'm sure. Hey. <laughs> you have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. Off you go. Oh, wow. Each team has been given a duck, which must feature in their main course, and pairs for the dessert. The teams also have access to a market. Right, 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 right. What are we going to do? Containing a wide variety of ingredients, including meat, vegetables, Can I grab a little courgette? Dried pulses and market essentials. You got any pomegranate flying around it? I think Kim might have took one for the team, to be fair. I wouldn't want to go first, because I think when you go first, you set the standard for what the dish is going to be. Junior sous chef Andy has made lamb loin with a turnip puree, charred baby turnips and grilled runner beans, garnished with wild garlic oil and garlic flowers, served with a lamb and rosemary sauce. Presentation is fantastic, really good. He's taking the apple and then rolling it up to make a beautiful big rose, which he's then going to roast off in caramel. I really like the sound of this. Puff pastry element is cooked puff pastry, which is infused into the milk of his vanilla ice cream. Now there is something different. Very interesting. Not had that take before. Looking forward to it. That sorbet is just stunning. I love the sharp notes of the raspberry. I think it, it's beautiful. When you break through it and you have all of that spoonful with the raspberry and the meringue and the condiment, it's just heavenly. Faultless, completely faultless. It's delicious. It's very light. Got to scoop the sorbet in a certain way. Pretty tricky to, uh, to get that right. Dan loves a little bit of fusion. And this shiso in with meringue and sorbet is a perfect East meets West. This has got Dan written all over it and he's done brilliantly well. Crying out loud, Les, I admire your courage, I really do. I am putting my heart and Christmas soul into it. I'm hoping to deliver for John and Greg two lovely plates of Christmas food. I want to be a Christmas winner. My biggest problem today is going to be timing everything right because I've got quite a lot of elements. I mean, I'd like to say that I practice this. I really would, but, you know, I've got four kids and I've got one on the way. It's not time to be sitting down practicing foods. You really are going for it, really going for it. 
It doesn't seem so daunting when I break it down into sections. All right. Next time, the four celebrities are back and the pressure intensifies. Whoa! 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 As they fight for a quarter final place. That tastes the nuts. Make or break, innit? I think it tastes fantastic.